a review of research on resonance tuning by singers. This work was done on Bedigal country and we respect and acknowledge elders past and present. Hello, I'm Joe Wolfe. This talk is about how singers tune a resonance of their vocal tracts to match a harmonic of the note they're singing. Resonance tuning is useful because it gives more output sound for the same input effort. It might also help stabilise the voice. The talk mainly reviews the work done in our lab at UNSW Sydney. I'll identify various students and researchers as we go, beginning with my co-author, John Smith. This graphic relates frequencies, measured in hertz or vibrations per second, to pitches. Basses can sing with fundamental frequencies below 100 hertz, and sopranos sometimes sing above 1000 hertz. The voice has harmonics, meaning that vocal folds vibrating at 100 hertz also generate frequency components at 200 hertz, 300, 400, etc. Here, the dashed lines show the harmonics. The pink shading shows the range of the first vocal tract resonance, R1. The blue shows the second resonance, R2. Their overlaps with the fundamental frequency tell us that resonance tuning is more important for high voices. The voice uses resonances in a way that's very different from other musical instruments. Supposing I sing at 100 hertz. To play that note using a simple cylindrical resonator, I need a pipe 85 centimetres long. About 100 hertz. But my vocal tract, the pipe from larynx to lips, is about 17 centimetres long, like this pipe. A pipe as long as my vocal tract has a first resonance at about 500 hertz and a second resonance at about 1500. Both are higher than I can sing. Wow, I've got a trombone pitch voice in a piccolo sized resonator. But that's for a rigid cylinder. With a flexible pipe, I can change the resonant frequencies by changing the shape. Here's a sound with many frequencies present. I put it through a 17 centimetre cylinder and already it starts to sound more like a human vowel. Now if I change the shape, I can change the resonant frequencies. Can you hear different vowels like To explain what voice resonances do, we'll use an oversimplified model called source and filter. In singing, the larynx is a source with lots of equally spaced harmonics. E.g., for 100 Hz, the spectrum has harmonics at 100, 200, 300, etc. The vocal tract transmits this sound, but the tract boosts the harmonics that lie near its resonances. In this sketch, the tract has resonances at 200 and 1100 Hz. So here, with a 100 Hz voice, the output spectrum would show strong 2nd and 11th harmonics. These strong bands of frequencies in the sound are called formants. Remember these terms. The shape of the vocal tract determines the resonances, which are properties of the tract, the resonances produce formants, which are properties of the output sound. Formants determine what vowel we hear. For more about that, see our website. Here's a map of the vowels of Australian English described using words made of H, vowel, D. Mouth opening mainly controls the vertical direction, tongue position the horizontal. Try it yourself without thinking of what vowel you're making. Mouth opening Tongue constriction. The axes here are the resonance or formant frequencies. Without changing the pitch, you can vary the first resonance by opening and closing the mouth and vary the second with the tongue. 
The resonances produce the formants in your voice spectrum and they largely determine which vowel a listener hears. Here's a different demonstration of how mouth opening controls the first tract resonance. The eminent voice researcher Johan Sundberg observed that sopranos usually open their mouths wider for high notes. He argued that they were tuning the first resonance R1 to the fundamental FO of their voice, what we now call R1 FO tuning. Our lab developed a technique to measure the vocal tract resonances precisely and without much disturbing the singer. We carefully synthesize and calibrate a sound containing hundreds of different frequencies and deliver this via a flexible tube to the singer's lower lip while he or she is singing. Here's an example measurement. The sharp peaks are the harmonics of the voice, FO up to 7FO here. The quasi-continuous line is the response of the vocal tract to our signal. The peaks in that line indicate the resonances. In this example, the first resonance, R1, lies between the second and third harmonics, so it doesn't produce much of a first formant. But the second resonance, R2, lies near the fifth harmonic, giving a strong second formant. Here's an example of a soprano singing U at two pitches. For the note C6, she has raised R1 to match FO at about a thousand hertz, giving her a very strong fundamental. Here, a soprano sings up the scale on four different vowels, and we plot the first resonance versus the pitch frequency FO. The grey shadings show the normal values for R1 for those vowels. At low pitch, she puts R1 roughly where we'd expect for each vowel. But at high pitch, she increases R1 to keep it close to the fundamental, so that R1 gives her voice a helpful volume boost. Repeating, for low pitch, the first resonance, R1, has roughly its normal value, no tuning. For high pitch, whether consciously or not, she's tuning R1 near the pitch frequency FO. That's R1 FO tuning. Tuning R1 means that the vowel is largely determined by the pitch, not the lyrics. To illustrate this, we asked classical soprano, Kristen Buchatsky, to sing scales on five different vowels. La. La 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 and so on. Then I cut the recordings up. Here are the first notes in order. La lo lu. Le, li. And here are the last notes in a different order. Listen carefully and identify the order. When I posted this, I invited any soprano who could differentiate vowels on the high note to send me a recording. Nobody has. At that high pitch, there simply aren't enough harmonics to identify vowels. I stress, this is not a complaint about sopranos. It's a physical constraint on the instrument. You can't ask a trombonist to play pizzicato. You can't ask a soprano to distinguish vowels at high pitch. In the context of scales, every soprano we've studied, whether trained or not, uses R1 FO tuning above about the middle of the staff, lower for close vowels like U. Altos and sometimes tenors also use consistent R1 FO tuning in their highest ranges. Resonance tuning is harder for leaps than for scales, and it may require training in that context. 
Sopranos usually tune R1 to the fundamental, but lower voices sometimes tune R1 to a higher harmonic. One spectacular example is Bulgarian folk singing, where altos tune R1 to the second harmonic. This is called R1-2FO tuning. Mara Key demonstrates. Live, it is very loud. R12FO tuning is also used in belting. Tenors and baritones sometimes tune R1 to the first, second, or third harmonic, especially for high notes. For the lower range, low voices have less need of resonance tuning because low pitch means the harmonics are closely spaced, and that means that one of the harmonics usually falls close to a resonance anyway. However, male singers sometimes tune R1 to a higher harmonic for important notes. An extreme case of tuning resonances to high harmonics of low notes is diphonic or overtone singing. Here, the singer usually holds a single low note, then uses a very strong track resonance to produce a single, very prominent high harmonic. The fundamental is low and falls in a range where our hearing is not very sensitive. For that reason, and also because the fundamental is unchanging, we don't focus on the fundamental, and we notice instead the single strong high harmonic as a nearly pure tone. By varying the vocal tract and retuning the tract resonance, overtone singers can produce melodies using notes from the harmonic series, a bit like a bugle. Mal Webb demonstrates. <laughs> An interesting topic for when we have more time. In classical singing, male singers use a different resonance effect. They lower the larynx. Again, lower the larynx. This enhances the third and fourth resonances, which together produce the singer's formant, which means a characteristic boost to any harmonics lying roughly around 3 kHz. The singer's formant is another interesting story, but it doesn't require tuning of the resonances, so I'll say no more about it here. Instead, I'll talk about resonance tuning in the high soprano range. Relatively few sopranos sing much above the note C6 or high C, which has a frequency of roughly 1 kHz. Further, Relatively few sopranos are able to tune R1 much above C6. Among the participants in our studies, a few sopranos could tune R1 a few notes higher, but this required either a short vocal tract, a very large mouth aperture, or both. For many sopranos, the upper limit to R1 FO tuning is close to the upper limit of their singing range. Could these limits be connected? Some of the singers we studied use a different tuning strategy to sing substantially higher. The second resonance, R2, has a convenient range for the octave above high C. And in this range, some sopranos tune R2 to the fundamental. They practice R2 FO tuning. That's illustrated in the lower graph. So the very high soprano range sometimes involves R2 FO tuning. It also sometimes involves the transition from the head register to the whistle register, or 
the second vocal mechanism, M2, to the third mechanism, M3. We don't see any simple relation between these two transitions. A soprano can make the transition from head to whistle register while in the R1 FO tuning range, or she can switch from R1 FO to R2 FO while still in the head register, then make the whistle transition at a higher pitch. These options contribute to the complicated taxonomy of the high soprano range. However, most sopranos don't use the R2 FO tuning. Further, it's interesting that for most singers who don't use R2 FO tuning, the upper limit of their singing range coincides roughly with the limit of their R1 FO tuning range. Could it be that the limit of their tuning range limits their singing range? And if so, why don't they use R2 FO tuning? Well, it seems to be difficult to learn R2 FO tuning, in part because it's counterintuitive. Singing up a scale, at the point of transition, the soprano must suddenly reduce the mouth aperture rather than increase it. So we wondered whether we could teach R2 FO tuning and other types of resonance tuning using our measurement technique to give visual feedback. Here's a photo of Noel Hanna using the system, injecting our calibrated sound source at the lips. And here's a screen grab of what the user sees. Again, the sharp peaks on the black curve show the voice harmonics. On the musical staves at the top, the harmonics are black dots and the horizontal red bars show the resonances, R1, R2 and R3. In an experiment, eight sopranos came separately to our lab to learn the difficult R2 FO tuning. In a one hour session, they received visual feedback to tune R2, first while miming, then while singing. After the one hour session, most participants could use the visual feedback to tune R2 to a desired pitch. However, after only one hour, they were not able to do the R2 FO tuning consistently without the visual feedback. They often said that it was hard to reduce the mouth opening for higher notes. It's the opposite of what they normally do. Nevertheless, Two participants did spontaneously switch to R2 FO tuning for single notes at the upper limit of their ranges. Well, maybe one hour was just not enough training. Marie Genato is a soprano and a physics student who worked on this project in our lab for four months. She used the feedback system on herself for about half an hour a day. After four months, she could do R2 FO tuning without needing feedback. Further, her upper comfortable singing limit extended by a fifth from A5 up to E6. That is, from the A below high C to the E above high C. Let's review. Tuning a vocal track resonance to a harmonic gives singers more sound for the same effort and may stabilise the voice. The easy case is tuning the first resonance, R1, to the fundamental. Sopranos usually do this without training, and other voices sometimes use it in their high range. Tuning R1 to the second harmonic is done systematically by some altos, especially in belting, and in some ethnic music styles. Adjusting R1 to higher harmonics is sometimes used by lower voices, especially from important notes. And in the extreme high range where R1 FO tuning is impossible, some sopranos tune the second resonance to the fundamental. There's much more on our website, search voice acoustics. Link is below and you can also leave questions below.